You're listening to m e t s c o Radio coming to you from Central Tokyo. All right, let's look at another MCQ from Osmosis. A 17 year old girl comes to the office because of primary amenorrhea. Medical history is non contributory, and she says that there is no chance that she is pregnant because she is not sexually active. Physical examination shows age appropriate breast development, but with no axillary or pubic hair. Pelvic examination shows a blind ending vagina with no palpable uterus. What is the most appropriate next step in the evaluation? A. Check FSH, follicle stimulating hormone levels. B. Check prolactin levels. C. Head MRI. D. Karyotype. E. Pelvic ultrasound. And the answer is D. Karyotype. So the major takeaway here is that primary amenorrhea with a lack of uterus development and otherwise normal secondary sexual characteristics is concerning for m a l a r i a n agenesis XX and androgen insensitivity syndrome or XY. These are distinguished with serum testosterone levels and or karyotype. So before we go into the main explanation, let's look at why the other answers were wrong. For example, check the prolactin levels. Elevated prolactin would suggest pr-、uh, pituitary adenoma with, or hypothyroidism. This presentation is not suggestive of either of these diagnoses. Hypothyroidism, for example, is characterized by fatigue and unexpected weight gain. How about a head MRI? Tumors on or compressing against the pituitary gland can cause reduction of FSH and LH levels. Evaluating for a pituitary tumor via MRI is indicated if the patient shows signs of increased intracranial pressure, for example, headache, vomiting, or vision changes. Why didn't we need a pelvic ultrasound? A、uh, pelvic ultrasound would more specifically investigate the morphology of the patient's pelvic organs. organs. However, abnormalities are already visualized and suggestive of a possible chromosomal abnormality. So let's look at the main explanation. The differential for primary amenorrhea in patients with normal breast development depends on the presence or absence of female internal. Reproductive organs. A female with primary amenorrhea who does not have a uterus but otherwise has normal secondary sexual characteristics should be concerning for m a l a r i a n agenesis and androgen insensitivity syndrome, which is、uh, testicular feminization syndrome. A patient with m a l a r i a n agenesis has normal FSH, LH, and estrogen levels, leading to normal development of breast and ovaries. However, The cervix, uterus, fallopian tube, and or upper one third of the vagina are undeveloped. Patients with androgen insensitive, insensit- insensitivity have testes which produce testosterone, and that testosterone binds to androgen receptor on various tissues to develop male secondary sex characteristics and external genitalia. Without testosterone or a functioning androgen receptor, the body develops as Phenotypically female, along with typically a female gender identity. The most definitive way to distinguish between these diagnoses is with a karyotype. Patients with m a l a r i a n agenesis will have an XX genotype, while those with androgen insensitivity syndrome will be XY. It should be noted that serum testosterone testing is a less expensive diagnostic option. That often precedes a karyotype. Testosterone levels should not be measured if the patient shows no signs of post pubertal sex steroid production. So there we have it primary amenorrhea with a lack of uterus development and otherwise normal secondary sexual characteristics. Think about m a l a r i a n agenesis, XX, and also think about androgen insensitivity syndrome, XY. Thanks very much for tuning in. Let's finish off with Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, The Rain Song. <laughs> Thank、you
springtime of my loving The second season I don't know her You are the sunlight in my growing So a little warm I felt before It isn't hard to feel me glowing I watched the fire that 